This is a 69-year-old female presented with classic symptoms consistent of ovarian cancer, increased abdominal girth, increasing shortness of breath. She was found on imaging to have both pleural effusions as well as ascites. She had a CAT scan which also showed upper abdominal disease. In order to help with her symptoms, she had a thoracentesis and a paracentesis, and then a core biopsy of her omental mass. This was consistent with a high-grade serous ovarian cancer. At that point, we had an extensive discussion with regards to the patient and the options of treatment. She elected for attempt at op uh, surgical re uh, reduction. She was taken to the operating room, exploratory laparotomy was performed. We were able to remove a large volume of the disease, but she did have some persistent disease at the end of the procedure. Once she recovered from surgery, she elected to proceed on a clinical trial, which utilized the doublet of carboplatin and paclitaxel in addition to bevacivimab. Bevacivimab was then continued as a maintenance therapy. This is a very typical patient presenting with ovarian cancer. Most patients will actually be seen by several practitioners before the diagnosis is made. Obviously, when we're looking at this patient, she had a quick diagnosis because of the a biopsy which was performed. They will often present with subtle symptoms for weeks, months, weeks or months before being diagnosed, often with early satiety, increase in abdominal girth, vague abdominal symptoms. It's very important whether or not how to differentiate these symptoms which are to worry about versus those that aren't worrisome. If you ask primary care practitioners, will their patients have these symptoms? Most of them say, yes, they have them. So how do we differentiate those symptoms which are worrisome versus those that are not? Those symptoms which persist and increase over time are the more worrisome symptoms. Because of her ascites and pleural effusions, she had a, a quicker evaluation. The most uh, challenging or controversial aspect of this patient up to this point is the decision to proceed with attempted uh, cytoreduction. Typically patients with uh, pleural effusions, particularly if they're large, requiring a thoracentesis, or significant upper abdominal disease, which we do not think we'd be able to remove all of the visible disease. Obviously, we want to get optimal, which was previously defined as disease less than one centimeter, but we really modified that to patients that have no disease at the end of the surgery. Because of her pleural effusions, many practitioners and, and patients would elect to proceed with neoadjuvant chemotherapy, attempting to dry up the ascites as with the pleural effusions, allowing them to recover more easily after the surgery. Typically, with neoadjuvant chemotherapy, we're going to use three cycles prior to surgery, and three cycles of cytotoxic chemotherapy afterwards. In this particular patient, be, she went elected to go on to a clinical trial which utilized the platinum doublet as well as BEV. The testing for germline BRCA as well as somatic or molecular testing on the tumor has, gone, has undergone a significant change here recently. And the big impact has been the approval for rucaparib in somatic BRCA patients. In addition, wonderful research performed throughout uh, both the U.S. and the world has shown that not only do we have BRCA1 and 2, we have other HRD genes which could potentially have impact on families as well as treatment options for the patients. In my practice, we utilize a combination of both germline and somatic testing in any patient who's been diagnosed with advanced ovarian cancer, and really germline testing for any patient who's been diagnosed with ovarian cancer. By sending this test out both to the germline and the somatic or molecular testing, at the very least we're looking for ger uh, BRCA mutations both in the germline and somatic as well as those other HRD genes. In addition, as part of the tissue testing, we'll look for mismatch repair proteins as well as microsatellite instability.